messed up. Learn from our mistakes. Like you were late for your panel by two minutes. We love people, but we don't love people, if that makes sense. <laughs> Travel trailer, and we have... <laughs> So we did make it to Pine Mountain, Georgia for the Lippert Getaway. Uh, it was a little bit more hectic than normal, but not really, just because, I don't we know, travel. that's just how we travel. <laughs> but we did break a leaf spring. You saw last episode that we broke a leaf spring. It's our fault. We messed up, and that is why it broke, but we're going to talk about that just in a minute. First, I want to talk about travel styles, because I think we get a lot of, uh, we get a lot of comments and critiques on how we like to travel and I would just want to explain it a little bit. We originally planned on a two day trip, a six hour day, a six hour day. You know, that's that's not bad for us. That might be like cringy for you, six hours, but for us, that's how we like to do it. How do you like to travel? Uh, do you do the three, three, three? Do you, what, what are your rules? Do you have rules? What we like to do, why we like to travel sometimes long travel days is when we get to a spot, we want to spend as much time as possible in that spot. Right, especially if it's like a holiday or we're with family or friends, we would much rather take the hit of having a longer, harder travel day and enjoy where we are as long as possible yeah. before we have to get to our next destination. Because I do, I do love travel days. I love the fast pace sometimes. I don't want to waste time. If there's not a stop in between our stops, right. I don't want to waste time from point A to point B. I just want to get there and get to the next place that I want to be at. Right, and that's worth it for us, but it may not be worth it for you. And so it's one of the things we love about this lifestyle. There's something for everybody and you can tailor this the exact way you like it. So some people, like you said, the 333, you have to be where you're gonna be by three o'clock. We actually leave later than three o'clock yes. on some of our travel days because we like driving at night. It's easier for him, he likes it better, and there's way less traffic. So let's say we're leaving somewhere near a city. We wanna be away from all that traffic by the, by the time the morning comes, so we're out of there at night. But that's what we like to do. A lot of people do not like to travel at night. I personally love it. I really do love it. There's a lot less people on the road. Uh, and a lot of people are worried about animals. We've never hit one, we've never seen one other than just on the side of the road, but I see animals on the side of the road during the day as well. Yeah. So you I have don't to be know. more vigilant, I think. You have to you have to be more vigilant, but you're you have to be less vigilant for other crazy drivers on the road. <laughs> That's so, a greater I mean, danger. You're, you're training, <laughs> you know, idiots on the road versus animals. animals. So I don't know. Which is the animals? I don't know which is first, honestly. <laughs> we choose the animals. That brings us to a broken leaf spring. <laughs> Another broken leaf spring. Like I said before, we messed up. We should have replaced that after we broke our first one. We were warned that there was a good chance that if the rears failed, that the fronts would fail too. We let the summer get ahead of us and yeah. we just took off without replacing it. And we should have. We broke it on a road that has so many potholes. There's more potholes than there is actual tar. And that's where we broke it because if we'd have broken it anywhere else, I would have definitely known uh, right. because we had stopped just a half an hour before and right. I walked around. So I know we didn't break it before that. We broke it in the campground. It was convenient. Which we are so grateful for <laughs> because you do not want to be on the side of the road fixing something like this. So we were in a beautiful cement padded campground site. It was amazing. Much better than the side of the Much road. Much better than the side of the road. And we were in an area we were familiar with. So yes. that was another bonus. There's a few things that we have learned in these multiple instances of changing leaf spring that we want to share with you. But, the first- But first, how I saw it was our walk around. The walk around you yeah. should do whether you're stopping at a gas station, whether you're leaving, anytime you have an opportunity to check your rig out, walk around it. It was sitting just a little bit wrong and I was like, huh, that doesn't look right. Broken leaf spring. And when you're looking under there to check your leaf springs, if you see your leaf springs kind of flattened out, they should not be flat. They should have a nice, healthy bow to them. So if they're flattened out, you might want to think about getting them replaced. But, I'm oh, sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Those are all valid points and going into the tips, other things that you learn that you really need to do that walk around. So one of the other things we wanted to talk about is 
We learned when the first one happened, we were someplace we did not know at all. We had no idea where to begin, so you really need to think outside the RV box. And what we mean by that is, just because you broke something on your RV doesn't mean that an RV dealership or an RV parts place is gonna be yeah. your only answer to get that fixed. So the first time this broke, we were referred to a spring shop, which happened to have the exact spring that we needed. This time we found a boat trailer shop that had all of them in stock. They were getting a delivery within a half an hour. Our of exact calling them. Yeah, amazing. And it was 20 minutes from our campground. So we, from the time Corey went around and opened the door and said, we have a broken leaf spring. Um, and she said, and I was like, don't, don't joke with me. You're kidding. And he goes, I don't joke about leaf springs. <laughs> Um, we, it was about 40 minutes and we had the part in hand and we were out, you know, replacing it, it and fixing it. The second tip is that we learned on our first time that you need to have a really good jack. So the difference between changing the first one and changing this one with just the difference of a better jack was night and day and I much less time. I actually learned from the mistakes and I bought a new jack. <laughs> so you could just pump it up. <laughs> and a lot of people give me a hard time because I talk over her all the time. I'm terrible at it, I get excited. It's not, we love each other very much. I love her and I, that's the last thing I want to do is be rude to her, but that's a personality trait and I'm basically awful. No, to be fair, I talk over him all the time too. So I think that we're just both loud mouths and we just talk I just, if I got something to say, I just got to say it or I'm going to forget it, so. I promise, I promise we love each other. So unfortunately there was a little bit of muscle memory left over from the last time we did this. I don't know this. if that's actually unfortunate. Because it's like fortunate and unfortunate. Unfortunate we had to do it again, but fortunate that you remember. And I don't know, maybe because we were on the side of the road last time, it took a little longer. I mean, you got to zigzag back and forth to get the thing. But we were in a nice level pad to change this thing. And it was I, pretty fast. I think it was less than an hour. We changed both leaf packs in the front. The new jack definitely helped. The fact that we knew how to use our leveling system and the jack yeah. to just move the springs to where they needed to be instead of trying to force things. Um, that's what we failed at last time. We were using ratchet straps and we were trying to force it. <laughs> and it it became, was all a learning curve. It became very easy when you use the jacks to your advantage. Right. So it didn't take us very long to fix. She's always said growing up with the girls, that all things are fixable. Everything is fixable. The and girls would get so mad at me whenever I would say it. They'd get upset about something breaking or getting ripped and we'd always be like, <laughs> everything is fixable. Yes, everything so is fixable. As long as you and your family are safe, the yes. RV is just a thing. Like it's it's fixable and the I think the biggest tip is remain calm because if you can think clearly through like what the next steps are, whether that's even having to get something towed or calling somebody to come and fix it, you just have to keep calm and know that it yeah. is fixable. It's not the end of the world. Yes. Like if you tear your floor and you sob for hours. We'll fix it. <laughs> we just need to figure out a way to prop that up and get it secured. And I think if we jam this back up. Everything is so fixable. yeah, watching this channel, I don't want you to be fearful of getting on the road. Or like yeah. breaking lace rings left and right. I don't know that we got a bad batch. I yeah. don't know what happened, but it broke and we fixed it. Yeah. And we're back on the road. Now we are able-bodied. There's a lot of able-bodied people that don't even know they're able-bodied. You don't know what you're capable of when you need to be capable of it. Yeah. So just don't be fearful. Um, all things are fixable. Yeah. So lame, don't let it keep you from don't let it keep you getting out on the road and making memories with your family. That is the whole point of why we hit the road. It's why we're here at events like the Liver Getaway is to like be with community and meet with our friends that we haven't seen in forever and to to be able to make these memories together. So that's our number one advice. Here is your burning question. I know this is everybody's gonna say you're overweight and that is why you broke. In fact, we got weighed and we are not overweight. We are well underweight and actually about 3,000 pounds underweight for what those springs are rated for. So I said earlier, maybe it was a bad spring, but there's other factors. Um, speed, maybe I was going too fast over a bump because when you hit a bump and all of everything compresses under that load, when you hit a bump and you're going too fast, you get a lot of compression right. and that is when stuff breaks. Physics. So, <laughs> physics. honestly, go slow. Just because you can go 70 miles an hour on one road doesn't mean you can go 70 miles an hour on all roads. Yeah. You have to read the road and you're saying, why are you giving me advice? You're breaking everything. <laughs> 
One thing but I that's will... when you, sometimes you can't see it, but maybe I would have broken things far more times. We've been on the road for five years. It is until the fifth year we broke stuff. And maybe it's because I got complacent and stopped following my own rules because maybe we should have broke a lot more things because I didn't drive the way I did. Move on, I'm sorry, but there's a couple quick things. Look at the road ahead of you. Look at the white line that's to the left of you. And if you see some waves in that white line, there's a good chance the road's gonna be bouncy. Yep. Another thing, obvious thing, when there's a bridge coming up, that will most likely have a bump. Probably slow down, especially yeah. if the road, the highway you're on is notorious for it. Like the last one you went over was bigger. So maybe the next time you go over, come up to a bridge, maybe slow down a little bit. Those transitions can be super rough, which is actually how we broke the first one. That is definitely there how we broke the first one. There was a massive bridge transition that was so bad in New York. And one more small tip. If you look ahead on the road and you see black spots, there's a good chance there's a bump there because truckers have gone over that bump so many times and just a little bit of oil drops off every time they hit that bump. So that means there's a good chance there's a bump there. And then another obvious one, if you see scrapes in the road, there's probably a bump because some trailer has Dragon. hit that and drug before. And I know I'm doing this a lot, so I'm, <laughs> I'm really sorry. Those are just a couple quick tips. Read the road. I don't know if I need to say anything about railroad tracks, but obviously I do not go over railroad tracks People fast. People can wait. Honestly, that's that's my only response is like, you need to slow down to protect the house that's behind you. So like, go slow over those railroad tracks. So all that to say, learn from our mistakes. <laughs> don't be fearful. Get out there. Things are fixable. Better safe than sorry. Go weigh yourself. It's really easy. The Catscale app that you can get, it'll tell you where the nearest one is. You just have to drive up there, type in the number that's on the thing. You don't so have to easy. talk to anybody. It just sends right to your phone. That's only $13. It's definitely worth it. Don't break <laughs> things like us. Uh, let's not talk just about Just learn anymore. from learn from our mistakes and you'll be good. All right, so enough talking about that. We are so excited to be here for the second annual Liver Getaway. Like we've talked about before, we love how we get to come and meet up with our friends, be a part of the Scouts community and the Liver communities. If you guys are looking for any more information on that, you can check out the Liver communities app. We will put a link down in the description below. And we are just really excited, like I said, to see our friends, some of our friends that are here we haven't seen in over a year. And part of that is because during the year when all of us travel full time, we kind of scatter in the summer. The That's summer. what our beers do. They're going all over the place. And then we all kind of come back and culminate either on the West Coast in the South or in the East Coast in the South. So as we are coming over, we're getting to see some of our friends. We're so excited for like the dinners that we get to have and that we were able to have last night. The girls are here meeting up with their friends as well they even have some jobs where they're driving golf carts around and giving people rides and stuff so it's just a really really amazing time for us to be able to come and connect and share with people and the event kicks off tomorrow opening ceremony start right now we got some volunteer events some panels and then we are launching serve which is our brand new initiative to allow our viewers to be able to connect with nonprofits all across the united states we are so excited to be sharing what we've been working on for years year. years in the making years in the making for sure with lipper and with pause for love so more on that stuff Fun fact, 
your daughter, I heard, created the logo, which is pretty amazing. Lily. Yeah, Hi, Lily. Lily. We've selected you guys uh, to each receive $2,000 to give to your, your charity of choice. Give my hand. Seriously guys, without their time that they put into this over the past year, this would not be possible. Um, you were late for your panel by two minutes. Oh, All right. to get that You got it in first thing. So like we mentioned last night, we officially launched Serve With Purpose, which is our brand new volunteer initiative that we are so excited to share with you guys. We will have the link in the description. This is a website that is a database of nonprofits across the United States that we will continually be adding in the next year. And we also have seven Serve families that are joining in with us and hosting events so that you guys can find ways to give back on the road. Today is our first official Serve event, and we are headed off to FDR State Park, which is right down the road from the campground. We're doing lots of different service projects there, so we're gonna take you guys along and let you see what we're doing. And they're also doing an on-site volunteer event. So there's like 200 plus people volunteering today, which is pretty awesome. It's gonna be a great opportunity. I get to use my power tools. We're gonna cut some stuff up. It's gonna be fun. He's bringing the chainsaw, guys. He's very <laughs> excited. Nathan's over there grabbing me some extra batteries. So <laughs> we're not gonna run out. Oh, Hensley, what are you doing? She thought you were going to walk that way. She was going to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? Layla's the only one brave with the shirt on. Everybody else has got sweatshirts it's over their shirts. It's 44 degrees outside. We just launched a serve initiative, and you guys are covering them with sweatshirts. No, nope, we're going to get them on. Come on. Here's the thing, though. When this gets, when actually people watch this, they're going to be like, it's 44? No, it's snowing in <laughs> negative 10. Oh. So we are in group one and have gotten split up. Our group is actually clearing an access trail, an emergency access trail for the rangers to be able to come all the way down through if there was an emergency at any of the campgrounds. We are making our way to one of the trails and we're just gonna keep going, clearing limbs and trees so that a vehicle would be able to make it down here. So excited to be able to be serving the state park in this way and we're gonna get to work. Nice. I got it. I got it. Every day I'm left to die. Working hard and walking wide. But the big man puts me down, breaks my bones and shakes my ground. Yeah. Got the fire, got the flame. Gonna melt all my chains. So one of our team leaders was sharing that there's a certain kind of beetle here that actually eats around the limbs and it look, makes it look like the limb has been sawed off. So we're going to check that out. So burning the trail for you, huh? Yeah, this one right here, you already did it. And then... Georgia cool. bug. You sure it's not beetle? Look at that. <laughs> That's what he said. Are you sure it's not a beetle beaver? That is incredible. <laughs> 
Wow, that is unbelievable. Look what they do. That's what? unreal. That's right. <laughs> Good work, baby. Done. We have wrapped up our day here at FDR State Park. Thank you yeah. so much yeah. for having us. Let me say this too. Sure. You got a taste of what Pine Mountain Trail and Pine Mountain is. Yeah. Right. It's Man, beautiful. it's dear to my heart. Yeah. Aww. But we need some young folks to do this kind of work. Do That's what we're trying to get going. That's well, right. If, if Highmountaintrail.org. It's an incredible place right here in little old Georgia. <laughs> what, baby? Spiders. It's exercise for you. <laughs> what? Come on. Oh. That is literally like Arachnus Dethicus. The spider. Even the smallest bite from Arachnus Dethicus will instantly paralyze. Oh! Get it off! I would show you what he looks like next to my hand, but I'm sorry, guys, I'm not. That's not happening. Yeah. Oh. realizing that nonprofits are used to someone saying 20 people are going to come and five show up. Today we showed up with more people and more resources and more stuff for Boys and Girls Club and for the state park than they were even imagining to the point where we were having meetings at the state park because the rangers were so overwhelmed they didn't know what to do with all of us. And even when we got on the trail, you know, they're used to people not really knowing what to do and we had all these guys with chainsaws and they were just like, tell us where to they're dropping like massive trees. It was incredible. And what I want to say is today, Boys and Girls Club and the, the FDR State Park saw that you guys showed up and you proved yourselves. And that's what this program is going to do. It's going to prove to nonprofits across the United States and to the world that the RV community shows up and they do what they need to do. Ha <laughs> ha!